Okay, welcome again to uh, to this video where I'm going to talk about the initial calibration of the uh, propeller balancer software so that it gives uh, uh, pretty close and uh, accurate readings. So what I have done here, just fired up the program. Uh, as you can see, most of the values, uh, actually all of the values, are at default. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is go on ahead and connect it to my Arduino. And you will uh, basically see a uh, uh, message similar to this. Uh, that means it's all connected. So we can start. Uh, we'll start at 4G here. And uh, uh, for my filtering, I, I like to open it up a little bit. Um, uh, initially, I, I will probably have another video here shortly on filtering, but remember the more filtering you do, the more information you take away. Uh, as long as you can get a pretty good, decent signal here without a lot of jagged edges, uh, you know, then you're pretty good on filtering. I know that uh, around uh, 1260 will give me about 3000 RPMs. You can certainly find that out yourself by using the uh, tool here and having your ESC calibrated and uh, we'll go for about six initial runs, it's just trial for now, and a couple of dummy runs to clean any garbage out of the accelerometer. Uh, what I have here, as you can see from uh, my rig, I have my propeller, I have marked the reference blade, and, and there's absolutely nothing on this propeller now, uh, there's no tape, I'm just going to try to find out um, uh, really how it's oriented, and the reference blade to be the first blade that strikes the optical beam. So with these parameters, with nothing uh, checked here for any correction or any inverting or flipping of the X and Y axes of the accelerometer, we'll go on ahead and do an initial run. Okay, so we have some pretty good readings. Um, uh, what we notice right away is that we have an imbalance, but we don't know if this is on the blade, if this is on the hub. We're going to determine that. Uh, and we have a value, again, this is just a number uh, used as a reference uh, in terms of the magnitude of the global forces. Uh, and that number says it's about 8 million at 142 degrees. Uh, and you can also see that we have a pretty decent signal here on our accelerometer. Another thing we can do is we can bring up our FFT and you can see here right away that we have some very nice readings. Uh, it shows uh, vibration here actually at uh, a frequency of 50 <coughs> hertz and uh, a magnitude of 56. Uh, same, similar for the Y. So, okay, is this due to a blade? Is this to a hub? Which blade is the heavier blade? We don't know. Uh, okay, but we're going to find that out. So what I do is I take this very high piece of technical equipment here as a piece of tape and I'm actually going to go ahead and place it on my reference blade. Okay. Now, first blade strikes the optical system. Let me see with this piece of tape on this blade what effect that has on the software. We all go on ahead and take another run. Okay, isn't this interesting? So, by placing a piece of tape on my reference blade here, what I've actually done, and I didn't know I did it, is I actually balanced the propeller better. I, I went from like a number of around 8 million, almost reduced it by 50%. And you can see the vibrations here are a lot smaller. And again, if we confirm our FFT, look how the value has gone down. Remember we had a magnitude of something 40 or 50, now it's down to 30. Okay, so I'm pretty safe to say that by placing a piece of tape here, I counterbalance the heavier blade which is here, which basically leads me to believe that this blade here is the heavier blade. Obviously the rig is still not calibrated, it's pointing in the wrong direction, but it's pretty safe to say that this is a heavy blade. How can I confirm that? Well, let's go back to a very high piece of tech gear here and we'll take this piece of tape off my reference blade and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to place it on what I believe to be the heavy blade. And if I do this, this blade should even get heavier and remember that 8 million number that we got? Now this number should be a lot higher. Again, first blade, optical system, reference blade, let's take a run. Okay. 
Okay, our suspicions are being confirmed here. By placing it on the heavier blade, we almost doubled the reading. Look at these numbers are, you know, off the charts. If you look at the uh, the FFT, wow, we, we had gone all the way up to like 120 in magnitude, frequency about the same. And um, safe to say that this is the heavy blade, but our rig is not pointing in that direction, right? So now that we have an idea on which is the heavy blade, this is where we can start calibrating. The first thing I'm going to do is I know by flipping X and Y, it's actually going to point this in one direction. And you can play with this, uh, you know, as you learn. Um, and then you'll see here that I probably need an additional correction. And I'll bring that down to make that point to the heavy blade. And I'll put it at minus 40. Okay, now we confirm. Let's bring this thing over here. Flip the rig for the reference. Let's make a run. All right, now that's a good result, right? That's the heavy blade. It's the blade opposite my reference blade. It's really heavy. But really, the only way to now know that the rig is actually calibrated, if I act actually flip the blade and make pretend that this is now my reference blade, remember, it's going to be the first blade that strikes the optical system, the whole balance in the software should actually flip to the other blade. All right, so let's see if that's the case. Look at that. It actually flipped to the other blade. You can see also here that you probably need an additional correction. You know, now this is a balance between this and this. You know, I consider basically everything with this, these two lines, if it's pointing, if, if the vector is pointing in this direction, to actually point in the direction of the heavy blade. Don't think that this is going to absolutely always be right smack in the middle. There, there's no way that you can achieve this level of accuracy with all the forces and all the vibrations and all the different buildings of this rig, it would probably require a um, you know a lot more uh, electronics and a lot more technology uh, you know to achieve this. But this is now pretty close. And then again, if we go ahead and have another run here to actually confirm that that's the heavy blade. can actually play with the scale here so we can see our graph because it's really unbalanced. Okay, good result. And if we run it again the other way, you'll see that the force is going to point the other way. But we're not done, okay? The other things that we have to now consider is if we have the hub of the prop or the bell for that matter, you know, heavier, we need a couple of other forces here to show. So I know that this thing right now is really heavily unbalanced. So we don't want the very unbalanced force to show because we're going to now try to calibrate for the bell and the orientation. So I'm actually going to do what we had done before here. If I place the tape on the other side, remember this had the effect of actually balancing the propeller because we determined that this prop right here is really heavily unbalanced. And then I'm going to take another high piece of tech equipment here, a piece of heavy foam tape, and I am going to place it on the bell and we took the other piece of heavy tape here and we're going to place it on that bell. And then what we're going to do is now have a run. Uh, now this force here should actually show up in the rig like up here somewhere. Okay, so let's take a run. Okay, that's actually a pretty decent result, as you can see here. If we orient it, uh, and where I placed this piece of tape, it showed a force in this direction, and really not on the heavier side of the prop. And if we actually flip this thing around, just to confirm here, that force should also flip. Okay, and it did, right? 
look how look where it showed right down there now we can actually move this piece of tape to see if it moves more right but also notice that this plate is still very heavy and it requires a lot of balancing so it's probably not going to show us clean but anyway you get the idea right okay let's put this piece of tape there and make sure it sticks and uh, let's have a run okay it can a pretty decent result right as you can see here this is the reference plane is pointing in that direction that means the tape is over there oh guess what there's where the tape is okay so this thing now it's pretty well calibrated you can continue this process until you fine-tune it uh, you can always then go back and play with your filters here I have found out that um, a more open if you will filter will absolutely have an effect as to you know where this thing points and um, you know to show you that effect here if we go back let's actually go back and I'm gonna show you here you know the really really heavy blade and then we're gonna play with the filter a little bit so let's make the blade again really heavy we know this will work this is gonna point to the opposite side okay perfect result right let's see what happens if we actually make this filter really narrow so I'm gonna bring this thing down to about point, point oh 0.09 which is really gonna smooth this thing out but let's see if it still remains as accurate Okay, notice how smooth this graph is. There's almost any sort of noise, it's all gone because we really cracked down the low pass, but at the same time, we lost information. And because of that information loss, notice that where it was pointing specifically on that blade before, it's not pointing here. So we would need a lot more compensation. Now, you know, we can, we can actually do that. We can compensate now all, all the way up to like minus 67 and we'll have another run to see the effects of that okay and there you go and now if we flip it we should see something similar on the other side okay and there you go also so the one thing that I wanted to point out is if you play with your filters um, you would have to most certainly then come back and play with your compensation right because uh, you, you're filtering you are taking away information you're taking away vibration components and then depending on the way your rig is oriented you then have to go back and recalibrate and then you know after you do the blades again don't forget to do the bells because you might be able to um, you might need to also then flip either X or Y to get it pointing in the right direction. In my case here, I started with a blank prop. Uh, you found out that just flipping X and Y brought it to a blade, and then with an additional correction, depending on my filtering parameters, I was able to then make the rig uh, specifically pick up the heavy blade. And you can see how easy it's also to then, um, you know, look at your uh, accelerometer here values and uh, magnitude to find out if what you're doing uh, actually has an effect in, in uh, balancing the prop out. Obviously the less vibration uh, the better. Um, you will always have some vibration so I know there are people out there that are saying oh well you know I want to get this thing down to zero. You, you are never going to get you know the accelerometer down here. Let me actually do a, a, a read sensors here that's actually going to read the sensors of the accelerometer. If you think you're ever going to balance this thing 
to, to be a flat line like this, uh, don't bother using the tool, right? Just by the sheer rotation, just by the sheer, you know, force of the props rotating and air moving around, you're going to get vibration. Uh, but as you uh, begin to, um, you know, learn this, uh, you'll begin to know, you know, what's a, a good balance, what's a, a bad balance, and also when you put your props on your quadcopter, uh, to actually then determine you know how much vibration you get and and find out what is decent parameters uh, you know according to uh, your bell uh, and your motor another thing that can aid you in the orientation you know in this test sensors um, area here if you take your rig and you tilt it notice that it's pointing in 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 one prop and then you tilt it is pointing in the other prop it will help you to determine a little bit your X and Y. I, it's really not meant for orientation. Uh, the way to do it is really to go by the process uh, that uh, uh, you know that I showed uh, with a piece of tape and then trying to determine the unbalance of the prop. Okay, um, similar for a, uh, this is a counter uh, clockwise rotating prop, you have to go through the same process because the calibration is not going to be the same. The forces are going to change when the prop, when the prop, excuse me, it's actually rotating clockwise. So you have to go through the same procedure to try to determine this. It's going to take a little time. You have to be patient, but once you calibrate it, it's going to be pretty spot on to then help you calibrate uh, your motor and uh, prop combination. Okay, I hope this helped. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. And thanks for watching.